When we use Navigation View, SwiftUI expects us to provide both a primary and secondary view as part of the Navigation View. Otherwise, you get this kind of blank screen. By default, in Portrait, fine, it looks great. You can see a list of your items. But in Landscape, here on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you see a big white screen. And you've got to tap on the Resorts menu on the left to see the full list of things. That's not required. You can, if you want to, force this uh, push and pop behavior of seeing, you know, in and out of things in both views. You can do that if you want to. But in this project, we want to have a primary secondary layout. So we aren't going to do that. Now on phones that are big enough, like this iPhone 13 Pro Max here, SwiftUI's default behavior in landscape is to show the detail view. That's what we see right now. And the primary view becomes available as this sort of menu you can pull out with a gesture or by tapping this button at the top here to bring it up like that. And selecting something here, like a score valley, bang, shows a new uh, detail view. It's always been there. This is the way SwiftUI works. It has been there since the very first project in this course, but you might not have noticed it. Of course, it's there. You can swipe out or tap the button and see it now, but it has always been there. Now there's a problem. And honestly, it's the same problem you've had all along in this course. It's not immediately obvious to the user what they have to do. If they first run this app in landscape, I'll try now, I just see a big blank screen with resorts up here. It's not clear to the user. And in UIKit, we have uh, the option to fix this. We can say, actually, I want to show the primary view by default. But SwiftUI does not give us that alternative right now. And so we're going to kind of work around the problem. We're going to create a second view that's used as a default view, as a deep secondary view uh, by default. We first see it, bang, on the right, please select resort, as opposed to just seeing a white screen. That will then help the user discover the left-hand menu to work with. To do that, Make a new SwiftUI view and call this thing Welcome View. This can be really, really simple. The text here will be uh, Welcome, in the quotes ideally, Welcome to Snowseeker. I'll use a font of large title. Now that's okay by itself, it's something, but you want to give some folks guidance where to find the actual results. And so I'm going to wrap this in a V stack. We add another view directly below. It will say, text, please select a resort from the left hand menu. Uh, swipe from the left edge to show it. And that can be foreground color, secondary. That's it. Just static text. And it'll only be shown the app first launches because as soon as the user chooses the resort, bang, it's going to go away. I'll put that into content view alongside our previous views, so they appear side by side. All we're gonna do is add it to our existing navigation view. So this first view in here is whole list right the way down to its, its modifier, the resorts thing down here. That is our primary view, our list of resorts. After that, a whole second view inside navigation view will be our welcome view like that. And that's enough for SwiftUI to understand what we want. So run it again, boom, welcome to Snowseeker. It's much clearer now. You can swipe over from this side and see the menu, choose a score valley again, bang, there we go. So it's clearer now. But in portrait mode, when you're there, nothing has changed. If I run it from scratch, I see the initial screen straight away. That welcome view is never seen. It's only visible now in landscape when it's really needed. Now, if you're on iPad, remember what you see depends on the size of the iPad you're in, the device orientation you have, and whether you've got like one third, two thirds, whatever half split screen mode you're in right now. There's a number of options there. Um, probably a dozen configurations you can be in, if not more than that. Um, but the same layout will be used. If it has to have primary or secondary, it will still say, welcome to Snowseeker. Now, like I said, UI kit, the underlying iOS framework user interface design, does give us more control. We can say uh, whether the primary view should be visible on iPad portrait, for example, no matter what split view it is, make it visible. Um, this kind of thing is just not customizable yet in SwiftUI. However, we can stop iPhone 13 Pro Max from having split view. We could say, actually, no, just make it behave like the regular iPhone 13 over here, where we see this thing instead. Okay, it's a small device, you don't get the split uh, layout, 
We can have that on all iPhones if you want to. Um, if that's what you want, you know, I encourage you to try it first, see what you think, see if it suits you. If you like it, fine, you can use it. Um, to do this, um, I'll just add a new quick extension up here, which will be extension on view. This will be an app view builder, funk phone only navigation, navigation view, returns some view. And inside there, we're gonna ask UIKit, am I running on a phone right now? That's a special call in UIKit. You can say if our UI device, the current device we're running on here, has the user interface idiom of dot phone. Am I running on a phone? If so, send back self with a navigation navigation view style of dot stack, which switches that push and pop behavior. That's what it's called, the stacking of views behavior. That gets a single push and pop view on the phone. No matter what phone we have, give me the stack navigation style. Otherwise, just send back self. Don't apply the modifier. This means that it'll do whatever makes sense for the device and its orientation and its context. So iPad will still behave in a variety of ways depending on size, orientation, and split view status. Um, but phone will always have a stack navigation. Uh, so yeah, so using this Apple's UI device class here to say, am I currently phone or not? If so, uh, apply stack. We need the view builder here because one of our returns has a modifier, one does not. So they return different kinds of layout, and that's what the, the view builder handles for us with the, the if. This whole thing here has to be put into the view builder. Without that, you'll get an angry complaint from uh, Swift. There we go. Uh, don't do that. You need the view builder here. It is important. Anyway, um, once you have that in place, once you have that whole condition in place, you can now go ahead and apply that to your navigation view. So you want, don't do it to the thing inside navigation view. The nav view itself applies modifier. You would say uh, dot, was it iPhone, uh, phone only, sorry. Phone only navigation view, like that. And now, no matter which phone you're running on, you're gonna get the stack navigation style. But here we are on a Pro Max, boom. We see uh, all the regular layout just as we had on the regular Pros. So there's now no difference. No matter which orientation you're in, you get the sort of push and pop stack navigation view style. That's it. So you can use that and it'll only affect iPhones. You won't have to have this massive push and pop animation happening on iPad, which is not very nice. I'd like to try it. See what you think. I mean, it's your program, right? See what you think we try it out. Um, I'm a big believer in keeping your, eye, your layouts working the way apps work by default. So not overriding things unless you really think it works for your application. But it's important you like how it works too, so give it a try. I would say for the rest of this project, I am not gonna be using that modifier. It's not gonna be used here. I'll leave it in the code at the top here and it'll sort of work around. as so you can see it in the GitHub if you want to. Um, but don't let my choice stop you from making your choice because it is your project ultimately.